I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. A couple episodes back in episode 6, I spoke with a local artist named Selma Carrion. She was a young girl that wanted to be a tattoo artist. And one of the things she liked to do was she liked to just hand paint onto things. One of those things being t-shirts. So the other day she messaged me and she just wanted to tell me I've been hand painting shirts and if you know anybody that wants one, I'm doing them for $30. So basically just ask me if you know anybody, pass it along. And I said, of course I will. Last time I spoke with her, I said, if you're ever doing any new projects, let me know. I would love to tell people about them. But then I thought about it and I'd love to do more. And I was trying to think of a way that I could do it. So I told Selma, do you mind if I try to actually sell them? promote them online. I told her that I would pay for it myself. It's really just an experiment. I wanted to see if I could do it. I wanted to see if I could just find people that would want to buy her things. So she let me. So I'm going to sell them for her, promote them, and then give her the money. I just wanted to do it because I wanted to see if I could. And then of course, I have this podcast here. So if you want to, you could go to americanbandito.com slash carryonart and check out the shirts that she's selling. Basically, you can enter in your own text that you would like her to paint on the shirt, she'll make it and send it to you for $30. That's AmericanBandito.com slash CarryOnArt. C-A-R-R-Y-O-N-A-R-T. This week on the show, I meet a guy who tells me an interesting story about how something bad happened in his life, and he started to emulate that in his art. And then one day he looked at it, and it was just dark. It wasn't doing him any good. So he took it all, threw it away, and started creating stuff that was more about how, in the grand scheme of things, our problems are really small. So have a listen as I meet Jake Jensen. You from Madison? Where are you from? Yeah, I grew up on the east side of Madison, right over on the Atwood area. So you went to school and everything over there? Yeah, I I went to Marquette middle school oh. and then east high school now when did you start making or getting involved in making art or when you first started getting interested in it well i've always, i've been interested in art my entire life ever since i was a kid you know i grew up in the 70s so we didn't have computers or anything and one of my main forms of entertainment was sitting at the kitchen table painting pictures so i have vivid memories in fact i do believe my mom still has some of those original pictures really and then yeah i do believe she does And then I've really got into going to museums and expressing myself artistically when I got into high school. Okay. That would have been in the early 90s. Graffiti was all the rage at that time. Oh, yeah. I got pretty heavily into doing street art, not tagging, but actual um, doing murals. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then when I was about 21, I actually started making art for shows. I got out of the street art, you know, it's a phase. And then started, you know, making paintings and prints and stuff and um, setting up the coffee shops downtown, Madison. Let me ask you, let me go back a little bit on this. So when you first started and you said you were painting, which that's an interesting, most people, they start out drawing, but you said you started out painting. What kind of paintings were you doing as a child? I would just look at, look at something and then I would just start painting it. Like I, I remember distinctly, we had a, a big golden retriever and I remember she was laying on the, on the kitchen floor. And I just started painting her, you know, laying there. And, you know, like little kids, I I painted a little bit of, you know, everything and stuff. But I remember distinctly painting what I was visually seeing, which is odd because it's not how I paint anymore at all. I'm trying to figure how the years kind of changed into what you do now. So you said you did street art, which, first of all, that's because, yes, it was all the rage at the time. And also, I'm assuming just because it's really fun to do. Definitely an adrenaline rush doing street art. Now, with the murals, were you actually doing them without permission, or were you being hired to make murals? I got hired a couple of times at, like, bars downtown, but mainly without permission. Okay. I was wondering if it was legit street art or if it was uh, you were doing street art style, but in paid settings. But you're saying it was a little bit of both. (laughs) Yeah, it was a little bit of both. Paid gigs, you know, for art are pretty far between anyway. So you created those. And how did you finally phase out of that and get more into in a print form? Well, I, I, I still I still wander around looking for graffiti to these days. I love street art, but I guess I just kind of grew up and got a job. 
You can't be going out at two, three o'clock in the morning to well, you you know, could. put up a mural. Or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> but no, I, I just, I just kind of grew out of it and then got more into the idea of making, well, I'm not saying like, like making a profit, but actually making it so I can be self-sustained. Yeah. My art studio tends to owe me a lot of money at all times, but <laughs> that's okay. Do you have your own studio? Mm-hmm. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. It's in my apartment. Okay. So my next step is to um, actually get a studio setting outside of my apartment so I don't have to really breathe and eat paint at all times. Now, you sent me some photos of, of your stuff. I have a few questions about it. Now, there, there is paint on it. Not paint. They are paintings. But... Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, pictures of paintings don't you know turn out very well. But I guess the project that I'm working on right now is I kind of just have this thing going where I'm fascinated with micro like the absolute tiny. And I've been looking, you know, I'm going online and looking at pictures of different bacterias and viruses and stuff like that. And then I I haven't unpacked them because I, I just moved, but I have a whole other series where I'm doing all of the planets and including their moons in our solar system. So okay. it's kind of like this macro micro thing that I'm working on. I'm, be, I'm able to bounce back and forth. So if I get bored over here, I can go over and work there. Definitely on the micro side, I'm, I'm going more, more abstract. And then on the macro side, I'm trying to go as realistic. This is what Jupiter looks like. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, Jupiter has like 60 moons or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's a daunting task to paint them all. <laughs> yeah. so, so I'm going realistic there and then I'm going abstract on the micro. So I'm kind of So I'm able to bounce back and forth. What made you want to go down this path? Well, I I went through a divorce and I was pretty down and depressed. And that emotion can reflect into my painting. And so I was kind of just kind of doing this really dark, you know, grays and blacks. The whole project, I actually just threw it in the trash. And I just walked away and I said, you got to find something else to make you happy. Because this is what we're doing right now is not doing it. And I was on a project and there was a big, huge poster. I, I want to say it was just some sort of bacteria, and I was just fascinated by it. And then I was reading an article. Right. I didn't know that. But in our world, every day, there is this huge, massive war raging between viruses and bacteria, which just fascinates me. Apparently, they can actually see plumes of these dead bacteria from space, you know, in the ocean. Just fascinated with that idea. Just, wow. And there's like this arms race between them. And I guess this kind of where I lean, you know, we kind of wanted this fast, thick, bizarre war between bacteria and viruses expressed in paint. That actually is very kind of the way you described going into it. We're unsatisfied with what you were doing and all it showed was kind of one side of how you were feeling. And instead you found something that kind of described inner turmoil, wanting, wanting to win and fighting a battle that you may be losing, but you don't know, but you fight anyway. It's kind of interesting. It's actually very poetic. I, I kind of like that. Yeah, I guess that's just exactly how I can describe it. It's inner turmoil being expressed in paint. How long have you been working on this series? About four months. I work full-time, so I don't do art full-time. My part-time thing. Well, I was going to say that's a good turnover. You're like, oh, but I'm busy working. I'm like, no, four months, that's actually really good for 12 paintings. Especially on when it's abstract. I'm more concerned with the colors that I'm using rather than the final product. I don't start saying, okay, the final product has to look like this. I say, okay, what colors am I going to work with? I don't want to be too complimentary. I don't want to be too monochromatic. You know, I want, a, I want a nice mix. Have you had any background in it, or in art, or are you, are, are you just, it's just oh, well, something you've done to express yourself? No, I am a, I'm actually a professional painter. Like so houses I, and stuff? I, Houses, yeah. I joined okay. the local painting union about 12 years ago now. Oh. So it gives me a really positive income. And also, I get all the free paint that I want. Uh-huh. I believe my boss gives me paint. He's like, take it, take it. Here, here's five gallons of blue. Go have fun. Hmm. But so going to the union, we actually go to college for painting and decorating. And no we go through kidding. all color really? theory. Oh, yeah. So I think I did like, what? It was four years. So day school and night school. Still, that's pretty good. I had no idea that that's what the the painting union did. Yeah, they put you through college. And the only drawback is, is you have to get up at like five in the morning. Sometimes I have to work at night. Imagine that. Oh, yeah. But I love it. I love my job and I love you know all the opportunities that it brings me. I mean, I can literally go to our shop right now and 
pick up four gallons of paint that I know for a fact are just going to be thrown away, take them home and make a, make a beautiful painting out of it and put it up for sale. I really try to recycle with my art rather than going to like Michael's and buying a frame. Not only they're expensive there, but I, I go garage sale. People and they have a, a stack of frames. There are some horrible prints in it from the 1970s and I'll give you three bucks for it. Hmm. Take it home, pull the print out and all of a sudden I have a nice frame. And then, you know, a lot of times I'll take the frame completely apart and I'll decorate it to more reflect the painting. But for college, it really opened up my eyes, like full finish. I use a lot of my full finishing technique in my art that I learned in college for painting people's houses. Can you explain what full finish is to me? Full finish is, well, faux is, is French for fake. Oh, so faux we, finish. There's, there's several, yeah. Uh, I thought you said full finish. And I'm like, what in the heck is full finish? Okay, no, full continue. Finish. All right. Yeah, full finish. Like my favorite one is wood grain. You take anything, a plastic door, and I literally make it look like it's wood. I have certain techniques by applying glazes and different colors and specialty tools for it. Yeah, that's a lot of fun, actually. In the photos that you sent me of the stuff you've done, I wanted to ask you about the frames because they were different for each thing. And it did seem like the frames were part of the paintings. And there's even some where they aren't frames, but they're on like a mixed medium. So I was, I definitely wanted to know more about that. Explain the one that you sent me that's kind of two pieces on what I can only make out as maybe blocks or wood or maybe parts of a frame that are chained yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly which one you're talking about. I love that little painting. In fact, it's in my hallway right now. Okay. Um, that was, I made all my own furniture out of pallets. Out of pallets? And, uh, yeah. Huh. Tore the pallets apart and then put them back together. Okay. And, Easier said than done, by the way. Oh, I, I <laughs> don't believe that it's easy at all. I've never thought that for a second. Don't worry. So I had all these little scraps laying left over. And I was like, that little painting that I sent you was when I first started doing the um, macro micro. And then as it's progressed, I'm actually taking actual frames and building the paintings on the glass. So I'm doing them from reverse. You understand? Kind of. So I take the frame and I flip it over. Yeah. So I'm looking at the inside of it and then I seal the glass and then the painting is put right onto the glass and then it's built out. There's glass there. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the part that I wasn't getting on looking that's at this. That's how I, I'm getting that really bizarre, super depth 3D look. Okay. Those little parts that are on there. I was going to ask you about that. And then also when you originally told me that this was a micro series, that was the first thing that popped out at me was I was like, oh, maybe that has something to do with those little detailed parts that are, that are inside of it. For shows and things, how do you promote yourself and get the word out there? or even try to get shows? That, that's the hardest part, is, is you just have to be willing to approach people and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. And art is so subjective. You know, so I could, I could take five paintings and go and show five different people, and maybe one of them will like them. Because, I mean, it's just not for everybody. For my personal promotion, is almost exclusively just me going up and talking to people or me having a, a painting in my car and I might be on a job and, and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm a painter and you know, they're obviously you're a painter. And it's like, no, 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 I'm an artist too. And they're like, oh, what kind of artwork do you do? And then I run out in my car and I grab it and I show it to them. And I guess just the willingness just to go out there and say, this is what I'm doing, like it or don't like it, but that's my personal promotion. It's just try. I like that you, instead of having like a business card or something, you actually, your business card is like, hold on. And you reach into your car and you pull something out and go, this is what I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier. <laughs> Get the point it is. Have you ever thought about getting a website or anything? I thought about it. I, I guess not really. Like my artwork is slowly but surely just getting bigger. Once I have big enough, the big enough pieces where I'm going to be satisfied, I want to go straight to galleries. Okay. I don't want to horse around with uploading to a website and all that. Or I even tried Craigslist for a while. I got a lot of really positive results from that. How did you um, use Craigslist? Just upload some pictures and put it on there. Hey, this is my art. What do you think? Like you just asked. And you you weren't like selling it or anything? No. Huh. No, I have yet to put a price on any of the pieces that I have right now. That's interesting. What made you think to put it on Craigslist? I find that fascinating. I never That never would have occurred to me. Actually, I saw somebody else. Really? They had up a bunch of really cool prints, and I don't know if they were the person's work or not. I just responded back saying, wow, this is really great work. And the guy was like, thanks. And that was the end of it. And I was like, huh, why not try? That's fascinating. That's, that's the whole thing about this. You know, I don't, not afraid just to try. Yeah. If I fail, I fail. 
oh, that one didn't work. Let's try this. Hmm. Especially learning to build the reverse out painting. I failed so many times. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, like I tried to do Pinky from, I think it's Pinky, the ghost from Pac-Man. Oh, okay. And I, I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried to do that stupid ghost <laughs> to the point where I just had a pile of paint and, you know, just I was a mess. I'd paint my hair and finally I was like, just threw it. Tried something else for a while. But now I actually have a pinky, which made me extremely happy. I, I gave it to my son for uh, Christmas. Why were you trying to do pinky? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess I, you don't need a reason. You're just like, I'm going to paint Pinky. No. That's, that's a good point. You know, it's funny. I go to my favorite art store and go in there and they always ask, oh, what are you working on now? And I went through this whole phase of, of doing nothing but carrots and bunny. Oh, and nice. I'm like, oh, carrots and bunnies. And they just look at me like, hm, whatever. <laughs> like, not even phase them. With the internet these days, that's not out of the ordinary. There's all kinds of, like, there's an entire genre of art that's just called cutie art. And it's people drawing almost Pokemon looking things out of just regular animals, just giving them big smiles and big eyes. And yeah, these days, oh yeah, no, there's like, there's like a whole thing about it. There's YouTube channels dedicated to it. One that I'm probably going to forget the name, but it's like, uh, draws with waffles or something like that, or drawing with waffles. Drawing. It's all cutie art. Yeah, it's it's cutie art. And what she does is she'll draw things like, I mean, her name is Draws Whiff Waffles, and it's Whiff, W-I-F-F, Waffles. And and yeah, she, the whole thing was she started by, she drew a waffle and put a cute smiley face on it, and then she'll draw like a bunny and give it like big eyes and a cute smile. It's 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 like a whole thing. <laughs> so it's not, <laughs> you, you were doing it without even knowing that it existed. No, I, I've never even heard of that. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look it up. Yep. Uh, your best bet up. would be to find it on YouTube. Go on there and there's like tons of channels dedicated to people just drawing. They do quick drawing videos of just like little cute things and that's it. And they've got tons of followers. It's crazy. And I watch it too. So I clearly enjoy it. I don't know. Seems weird to say out loud, but <laughs> now that I say it, but I enjoy watching those videos. You said before that you have kids, two boys. Yeah. You work during the day, and clearly you've already explained that you have wacky hours sometimes. Then you have the kids. Now, what what kind of lifestyle changes did you have to make over the years to be able to do this? So number one, I only work. I work an eight-hour day. That's what one nice thing about working for a union shop. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah. People died for that, right? So with the eight-hour day, you know, that gives me a lot of ample time in the afternoons to sit down and make and create, but. I actually, when I'm driving around, I spend a great deal of time thinking about projects that I want to work on. So just while I'm driving, I have this really funny print that I want to do. Now that you brought up cutie art, I actually want to do it in a form of a stencil. And it's a little bunny sitting there chained up to a carrot that's actually a spike in the ground. And I, I thought of that stuck in the traffic on the belt line. How do you set it up? How do you then sit down and get started? What, what's sort of the process that you do? I'd, I'd pick out the colors that I want to work with. And that can be mood dependent, of course. If, you know, I'm, if I'm not in the greatest of mood, I know I'm going to go for blacks and grays and whites and stuff. Once I have my colors set, I literally just create my painting. I've had company come over and I'd be like, I need 10 minutes and then we can hang out. Uh, or if my kid, I'll, I'll get my kids involved right into it and be like, hand me that color. You know, no, no, not that one, that one. In fact, both of my kids love to paint. Ever since they were little, I've always gone and bought little canvases for them. As for time, I have plenty of time. Is there anything you'd like to mention that we might not have covered today? Something that's coming up, something that you want to do, something that may not even have anything to do with what we talked about today? That's something I've been kind of wanting to maybe... Like if you come to one of my shows, you go to another painting show and they they have nothing but paintings going down the wall and every one of them is $1,500. Okay. Well, I like people to be able to come into my show and say, oh, well, that's that's a beautiful $300 painting. And then they go down the wall and be like, hey, that one's only 30 bucks. I'll buy that. I wish more artists did that rather than focusing and, you know, have a handful of pieces that the average person can afford. I like to call them bathroom pieces or a kitchen piece. You don't have a lot of wall space in there, so you can just hang a little picture on. Yeah. And I, I honestly wish more artists, because I go, I go to quite a few shows, and I wish more artists did that. People that like to appreciate it, but can't necessarily pay for a large piece. Right, exactly. I get that. 
I've actually had a very similar sort of observation, but I had noticed what some people are doing along with the art that they're displaying. They'll have the piece up there, but then they'd have a box that had maybe smaller prints of that painting that they would be selling for, say, $30 or $15. And I oh, actually that's would a good have, idea. Yeah, it was, it was something I was noticing more and more. And guess what? Totally bought him. Of course, yes, he should be able to sell an original piece for what it is worth. But I couldn't buy it. So you feel guilty walking away going, oh, I came here and I really appreciated this, but uh, I can't buy that. And I turned and saw a box with a picture of it. And he signed it for me and I took it. So it's something I have been seeing. So maybe what you're saying other people are starting to notice too, because I as well noticed it, as I mentioned. Well, that's just a stupendous idea. I was a glass blower for years and years. You were? Yeah, I, was, I blew glass. I have a bad left arm and it was just too hard on it after a while. So I would have pieces that, you know, I want $150 for, but then I always had a stash and my favorites were making glass beads because I would just make them out of scraps off my bench and be like, huh. oh, well, you can't afford that. Well, I have all these glass beads for 15 bucks each and those were always go. Couldn't make enough of them. I really do like the idea of people selling prints that are kind of like impulse buys, as I said. Behind me on my bookshelf, I know from this summer I have at least three or four pieces that I got just because they were more obtainable. Because I was at events where there were so many people I couldn't buy everything. So this was a way to give back. I want to thank Jake Jensen for talking with me today. And don't forget, if you want to check out Selma's shirts, or maybe even order one of your own, go to AmericanBandito.com slash carryonart. Now, if this is your first time listening to the show, if you haven't yet, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on Google Play if you're an Android phone user, or just go to AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe, and all the links and places that you can subscribe are right there. And while you're at the site, you can read my daily comic journal called Then This Happened. It's my personal comic journal that I draw every day talking about what's happening in my life. The music for this show is my side project. It's called Romcom. That's com with two M's. And if you like the two songs you're hearing in the background, you can hear the full versions of them at AmericanBandito.com slash music. I want to thank you again for listening, and there's still more people to meet, so join me again next week. So long.